So a few weeks ago, I was giving a talk uh, at a conference, and we were talking about sense making and noticing, wondering, and all the stuff. If you came to my talk this afternoon that we talked about, and I've maybe talked about before, we had a great time. And this one teacher at the end, we had some questions. She said, um, "You're not going to like this question. I like all these ideas, but I don't have time when I got to be done with chapter four by the end of November, or else." And of course, I'm a professional, so you know, I was like, "Oh, okay, that's really nice." So. Um, and I gave her some ideas, but let's revisit for a moment my two truths and a lie. I am related to Cole Porter. I can sing a few bars for you later. I did meet my husband when I was 15, but we totally do not have time to talk about that right now. And I almost, those of you who know me know that I often say exactly what I think, very often. Um, but there are times when I don't, because what I really wanted to tell this woman was, you are wasting everyone's time. Right? <laughs> You're rushing through stuff. Kids have no idea what's going on, and you're just you're blowing it because they don't know what's going on. So let's look at a few cases. I was working with a seventh grade teacher, and she's like, "My kids are really good at the Pythagorean theorem. We've been doing this for a week, and let me tell you, they are killing it. They can find A, B, or C every time." I'm like, "That's great." She's like, "Let's do a problem about it. Why don't you do a problem with them?" I said, "Great." So I brought this problem, and so the first period of seventh graders they noticed and wondered about this picture, and the second period of second, seventh graders noticed and wondered, and right. Right at the end of the second period, one kid finally notices that there's a right triangle in the picture, right? And I'm like, okay, yeah, you know, you can imagine. So I'm thinking, oh, that's just awful. What do people have to say about this on Twitter? So I asked about it, and Lisa Henry wrote back, and she's been doing the algebra problems of the week with her students this year for the first time, and she said, I've got to do it because I want my kids to be able to find the math in situations. She didn't know about the seventh graders, but she wanted them to be able to find the right triangle so they. Could could get to A, B, and C, right? She feels like if my kids have problem-solving skills, it's okay if we miss out on some of the content because they'll they'll cover for it, they'll figure it out. I don't want to use the word cover, my goodness. Um, and she's wanted to do this for years because you know she's looked at the tests that are coming up, like it or not. And that's what kids are going to have to do. They're going to have to be able to think, and they're going to have to be able to figure things out, not crank out answers. So um, Bob Lochelle tweeted back to me, and he said, you know, some people see it. If I take some time to do habits of mind, I lose time for the other thing. That like there's only this balance, and they don't understand there's this efficiency from doing things around habits of mind that it kind of doesn't matter. Um, Tina Cardone was a great example of this. She tweeted about this um, graph she was doing with her fundamentals of algebra kids, and they noticed and wondered about this because they wanted to talk about slope. And she said, you know, we noticed and wondered the heck out of this, and then when it came time to actually do the handout. The kids didn't ask any questions. They knew exactly what was going on. They had gained all of this time, and she said, "We didn't even have to have a wrap-up discussion because they got it. They understand, and they were excited to do the handout because they understood the situation so well from doing noticing and wondering." So another teacher, Paul, uh, a middle school teacher friend of mine, taught a, high, a geometry class to eighth graders. And one year, he couldn't meet with them on Fridays. Every single Friday, right? He was going to miss out on one fifth of his instructional time. So he said, "I'll just send them to the lab." And they went to the lab, and they did. Yes, it's an old version of Sketchpad because this is the 90s. Um, and Jerry in the lab just said, "Look, I'm just going to do stuff from this book." And she just gave the kids activities from the book. She didn't talk to Paul about what he was doing in class at all. They just did Sketchpad. And what happened was. You get back into geometry class, and February rolls around, and the kids start saying, um, "Teacher Paul, we know this already." And he's like, "No, no, no, you've seen it before. No, no, we know it. It's the first time he ever finished the book." And he only had them for four days out of five. That's not how it's supposed to work, right? So, here are some familiar laments that, if you hang out in schools like I do, you often hear. And if we're just rushing through and trying to cover stuff, no matter how good we are at doing that. These things are not going to change, right? They we're going to keep doing these same things. Do seventh graders, for example, realize that seventh grade math is really sort of about nine ideas, um, or do they think it's about 785 pages of separate ideas? Right? A hint. The answer is the second one. <laughs> Coaches and administrators, are you giving your teachers time and support to do the mathematical practice and to do all five of these things and not just procedural fluency? Because it's on you too. Okay, just Sam. So we hurry through coverage, and that is not going to make kids like math, or be good at math, or do well at math. Right? So we really need to not do that. What we need to do is we need to slow down and wait for the next slide. <laughs> we need to be doing these things so that our kids can figure out that they can learn math and that they really like it because it's awesome. All right, thank you.